Hi, this is Shahid again. Um, it's module five, uh, architecture and design. So we kind of know a bit about the UCS directory now. Overview, um, how to deploy, uh, what it does, uh, kind of uh, high level. Uh, now we go over the architecture design, and after that we'll start talking about, you know, um, how do you kind of make it happen for the users to deploy a VM kind of basic workflow, then the advanced workflow, bare metal agent, those kind of stuff. Um, so um, solution architecture and then the deployment scenario, uh, there's two parts to here. So one is uh, there's two components of the UCS director, as I mentioned before, one is the UCS director controller itself, um, which has uh, kind of different tasks within itself. Uh, but the whole thing makes UCS director, so you can kind of deploy a customer environment uh, just to UCS director, one VM, and you don't need anything that's possible. And also, you might need another additional component, uh, bare metal agent, uh, by its name, only for bare metal server deployment. So if you have a UCS server and you would like to deploy ESX on top of that, Linux, Windows, and there is a kind of chart what all operating systems supported, um, you would need that. Otherwise, it's not required. Uh, what and how the UCS director uh, does uh, make use of bare metal agent? Um, I have a complete different session for it. Um, I'll go into details. Uh, it's kind of standard PX boot, uh, you know, DHCP servers, they have to be IP address, TFTP, and then it kind of pulls the, you know, uh, information, uh, sorry, uh, binary files, and then you run some scripts to configure it. Pretty straightforward PX installation. Uh, but I'll cover that in a different session. So, so let's go to the next one, which is how does it look inside? So um, it's a Linux box. Uh, I think it's CentOS um, 6. Point, uh, depending on the version X. Um, there's a MySQL database, which is heart of the system, sitting on the side. And then you have got different you know, controllers, um, event um, energy access manager, which kind of controls uh, your um, local access event managers, and then the feature module, orchestration and scheduler. Uh, this is probably the most powerful feature of this um, UCS director. And how can you get in here? Um, there are many ways you can get in, SSH, of course, you can do shell admin. You can also log in as a root, and you can run the uh, ACL, um, uh, Linux commands. Uh, normally, you do through the web portal. There's a Tomcat um, service running. And also, REST API gives you, you know, Open API 4, you can uh, come in from anywhere. If there is not something UCSD provides out of the box, you can always, you know, make it happen uh, through the API. Bare metal agent, um, same thing. It has a MySQL database inside, and it kind of uh, has SSH action, but. Um, in the old days, like, you know, 4.1 version at the time, you have to do a lot of things manually. You have to go, you know, import the, your uh, image, configure that, and create those config files. But on 6.0, I think 5.1 onwards, it make it very simple. Just give you a script, you run it, and everything works for you, hopefully. And I'll cover if it doesn't work, then how, what to look at um, uh, in the bare metal agent session. Uh, this is what it looks like for the bare metal uh, agent, and its only job is to deploy bare metal server. Uh, you need different ports, and there is also clear documentation on Cisco website. You can search it and where the ports it needs to be open. I, the UC director must be able to talk to the components it's managing, so um, what are the ports it needs? Uh, so you can, uh, you can you need that ports to be opened. Deployment scenario like this is what I was talking about like if it's a simple deployment 2000 VM small environment, maybe 5000 um, 4.1 it's kind of old slide. Um, I think latest is 6.0 as I said and 6.5 is um, on the horizon and um, The documentation clearly says how much CPU how much RAM how much uh, your gigabyte you'll, have, you'll need and pay attention to that. And also I think you need a reservation. It's recommended that you should put a reservation on that so it doesn't kind of fight with anyone else for resources and the infrastructure. Um, then there's a management VLAN. This is I think important concept that you have a management VLAN um, and you probably communicate with all the other things like UCS, your infrastructure, whatever, through this management VLAN. And then there's a bare metal agent you have the option to make one interface or two interface. In this case, probably production will have two interface anyway. 
one is just for the PXE. So um, this is just used for to communicate with the servers uh, in the maybe UCS uh, PXE VLAN, and then it has to be native. And then it provisions that, and then you can sw switch the your Vinix or your VLANs any way you like. Okay, um, so again, I'm going to cover these things in the BMA part, but uh, just for understanding, um, this is uh, kind of important. Again, it makes it very simple. Uh, UCSD, once you add the BMA legend on that portal, uh, the one I showed last time, um, it kind of gives you option. You have two interface or one interface, and then you just put the information, it does everything for you. Um, Okay, next one is deployment model. Let's say if you have a standard environment, 2000 VMs, you have one UCS director, and that's the whole blue box is a single box, actually. Um, you can have a partial agent. Uh, if you have a, a huge Windows uh, and you need partial, uh, that's a VM you deploy in the environment and you act as an agent. You add that agent into the you know, um, UCS director. You run all those um, your partial commands there and sends the output back to the UCS director. And if you have a BMA unit, you can add that here. Now, if it is a bigger environment, multi-node, um, so UCSD performs basically um, different tasks. Uh, one is the you know, primary task, uh, and uh, there's a slide actually that covers each one of them. You can split those tasks onto different VM. It's a scalability thing, not a redundancy. So that's very clear to understand that UCSD at depth in this version, it doesn't have any kind of, you know, HA or fault tolerance kind of thing. Uh, it doesn't like, you know, work in cluster, you know, like if you have heartbeat going on, one goes down, other, no, that's nothing like that, 6.0. But in coming release, probably they have kind of, uh, kind of uh, intention that they might add that because customer are requesting that. Uh, but this is just for scalability. Bigger environment, more nodes. One, one your uh, VM doesn't replace the your task of other one. Multi node. Okay, there are three, basically three types of nodes. One is the primary, which you you know log in, you do your licensing, the workflow engine stays there, you do the configuration. Uh, that's the primary node that's we are working on, and it can be maximum one. That's important. Service nodes. Um, it runs this a uh, system task. As I showed in the last one, system task, the task is kind of run regular basis interval, like you know, maybe 15 minutes, maybe one hour. So it keeps running. And if you have a bigger environment, a lot of tasks will keep running, right? So that you can dedicate a kind of, you know, a service node for that. And uh, there is also clear guidance on the Cisco website that how many nodes you should have for um, a certain deployment. Um, if you search Google for Cisco UCS director, you know, six, whatever the version 6.0 installation guide uh, that has a multi-node setup that has this information. Uh, inventory database, you can have maximum one. Uh, that holds just the inventory data. There's a MySQL database. Monitoring database, again, you can have one. Historical, uh, your computation, trend reports, those kind of stuff. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, so you have your primary node where it just comes in and then your inventory and monitoring database. Then your UCSD um, service nodes, that can be you know uh, multiple. And then you have a VMware agent that talks to the inventory database mainly. And then you have a PXA villain. So um, the information is sent from the uh, UCSD to the bare metal agent, and bare metal agent communicates also back. So this is the kind of setup looks like for a multi-node setup. Uh, under the current your CCO uh, guideline. This is what states, but I would recommend you to check this is your website, Cisco website for the version you're deploying. What is the limitation? How much can attend? So, multi-node setup. Small means 500 to 10,000 VM. Uh, medium is 10,000 to 20,000, and large means 20 to 50,000 VMs. Small. So this is what it looks like. Number of service nodes. Uh, primary nodes, monitoring, you can see one inventory database and there's two service, three service nodes here. Then it goes medium and then the large. And there is, uh, let me go to the link actually. Uh, 
let's pause the recording. Okay, um, so if you search for Cisco UCSD 6.0 installation, installation guide, So you should see all of them here, 6.0, 5.5, all of them. So um, you're looking for, if it is a VMR, you probably just go for it. A multi-node, multi-node setup, and this will kind of guide you through. Configure multi-node. Uh, and there's an overview also. Whatever information I gave you, uh, it's from there. So uh, for regarding the multi-node. So uh, what is primary node, service nodes? Where's the limitations? Uh, you know, these are uh, here, all here. So how many vCPUs, memory you need? Um, everything's clearly laid down. So just follow the instructions. So for a medium one, so you have one primary, three service nodes. The number of service nodes increase or decrease depending on the size. That's all. Rest are static. You know, one primary, one inventory, one monitoring. So if you have a large one, uh, then you have six service nodes, and the you know the the memory CPU goes high. So, mm. so that's all uh, for the architecture design. Um, so I hope it was useful, and um, I hope you're going to watch the next one, which will be how you make the UCSD work for a plain VM deployment. Thank you for watching, and leave the feedback and comments. Um, I will respond to that um, definitely. Thank you. Bye.